Hey to those of you that tube the you. I'm Tim Freitas and welcome to the Garden of English. I'm thrilled you're here to travel through the sands of time as we continue to respond to a prompt about the poem Ozymandias. We've broken down the prompt and we've annotated the poem. So now it's time to start writing about it. But before we do, I'd like to remind you that if you haven't watched the first two videos in this series, you should. They will give you great tips for exam day and beyond. The videos are linked in the description and they have thumbnails that look like these. Now, when it comes to writing about poetry, I do something different than all of the other times that I write any essay. Rather than producing my thesis first, I actually produce topic sentences for my body paragraphs first. After I produce these, I then generate my thesis, and I'll cover thesis generation in my next video. You don't have to do things in the same order that I do, but I think you'll see why I do it this way as we continue here today. So, here's how I generate my topic sentences. Oh, that reminds me, if you don't know what a topic sentence is, you need to know that it's the first sentence of each body paragraph of your essay. A topic sentence is kind of like a contract between you and the person reading your essay. Whatever you say your paragraph will be about is what the paragraph has to be about. The better the topic sentence, the easier it is to write the paragraph. And each topic sentence should fall under the broad umbrella that is your thesis statement, which is normally the last sentence of your intro paragraph. Or during a timed writing, it can actually serve as your intro paragraph. Like I said, I'll cover thesis statements a little bit later. I want to begin today by reminding you about the annotations I made about the poem Ozymandias. They're about to show right up on your screen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how these annotations can be easily transposed into topic sentences. What makes this process super simple is having well-constructed templates to put this information into. So I'm about to put up some topic sentence stems for poetry right up on the screen, and then we're gonna check out how to use them. Here they are. You may notice that I have four topic sentence templates. I do usually recommend that all students strive to produce three body paragraphs at each one of their essays if they're timed. Body paragraphs are the paragraphs that come after the introductory paragraph, but before the conclusion, if you didn't know. Anyway, since there are four topic sentence stems, you may think that I want students to now produce four body paragraphs when writing about poetry, but this is actually not the case. With poetry, the conclusion paragraph is kind of like a hybrid between a traditional body paragraph and a traditional conclusion. I'll show you how to produce the full conclusion later, but for now, let's just learn how to fill in these templates for topic sentences. If you're looking for a copy of these templates and the examples that go with them, you can access them in the description right below this video. But before you actually click on those description links, make sure you click on the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, the super thanks button, and maybe even the channel membership button. Doing any of those things will help push the Garden of English's content out further into the digital world of YouTube. And it will help other students access really strong writing tips. Okay, in order to fill in the templates, I'm gonna take my annotations and I'm going to chronologically correlate them with responding to the prompt itself. Here's a pro tip. Whenever you write about any literature, make sure you write about it in chronological order. This will allow your essay to make much more sense. All right, back to Ozymandias. Let's look at topic sentence template one and write our first one. The first observations I make in my annotations about literary elements are based on setting, point of view, and caesura. When I write things into the template, I can label the literary element or I can summarize the literary element. And today I'm gonna to model both. With topic sentence one, here's what I'm going to write out. Shelley begins by presenting a reflective first person frame narrative and includes multiple instances of caesura, suggesting that the fractured structure of the sonnet symbolizes the present shattered state of the political monument and the break in time between its inception and the traveler's viewing. You'll notice on the left hand side of the topic sentence, I included some literary and poetic elements and on the right hand side, I correlated it with understandings that I had already made in my annotations. These understandings relate in some way to the question that we have to answer Answer about the poem that we generated when we broke down the prompt. Let me remind you of the question that we have to answer throughout our paper. What is the complex relationship between power, pride, and the passing of time? The language after the word suggesting correlates with the ideas I have to focus on based on the question because the understanding I make explores time's relationship to the speakers of the poem and the current state of the monument of the powerful tyrant. Time, power, pride, all covered in this observation. The understanding side of the template also correlates with the annotations that I originally made. You'll also want to notice all of the literary elements and the poetic elements that this topic sentence hits upon. Some clearly named, some not. I looked at point of view, frame narrative, caesura, poetic structure, symbolism, and universal ideas. Whoa, that's a lot. 
Now, to write this paragraph, I just need to provide examples of where the frame narrative happens and where the sejura shows up. Then, for the commentary, I'd have to explain how the textual evidence works to symbolize the state of the monument and the breaks in the historical time periods. This is why topic sentences are so important. If they are done well and always contain a reference to the textual evidence you're going to include in your paragraph and your understandings in relation to the prompt, you'll know exactly what to do in the rest of your writing. All right, now I'd like to move on to topic sentence number two. I'm going to go to the shift that I noticed in line six when the speaker moves from reflecting on the wreck to focusing on the sculptor. Here's how I'd fill in template number two. The speaker then shifts to contrasting the negative attributes of the ruler with the power of the artist, showcasing that though the tyrant may have had the authority at one point in history, the artist's power to convey his message has lasted longer. I chose my second topic sentence material based on the shifts that I originally marked when I annotated the poem. Notice that this time I didn't directly mention any lit or poetic elements in my topic sentence, but my topic sentence still deals with literary and poetic elements. It deals with shifts and contrasts, it deals with characterization, and it deals with universal ideas and insights. To write this paragraph, I'd have to include textual evidence about where the attributes are contrasted, and then I'd have to explain how the contrast conveys the artist's power lasting longer. Notice too that this topic sentence has the word though in it. Both the words though and although help add complexity to your writing. So you wanna consider using them if you can. You can actually learn more about how to do this in this particular video. Of course, it's linked down below. As I continue to follow my templates, I'm going to write topic sentence three about the other major shift I found during my annotation process when Ozymandias' quote is referenced. Here's what topic sentence three would look like. The speaker follows this by recounting a boastful claim, revealing the viciously arrogant and tyrannical nature of the Pharaoh. This topic sentence discusses the single quote from the dead Pharaoh and correlates it with how it characterizes him. So we are doing this right even without explicitly mentioning any lit elements. Now, to finish this paragraph, I'd have to include the boastful claim and explain how it makes the past leaders seem tyrannical and arrogant. Now it's on to the fourth topic sentence, but you need to know that this one is going to actually begin our conclusion. Because of this, we need to create a sentence that incorporates the whole poem, everything that happens in it. There is another video for how to write the poetry conclusion. Anyway, to create the final sentence, I'm going to articulate a major contrast or shift from the beginning of the poem to the end, and then I'm going to finish this sentence with a universal insight. In all of the other topic sentences, my understandings, that's the information that showed up on the right-hand side of each template, have in some way related to what was going on in the poem. But in this last sentence, our understanding side of our topic sentence has to be entirely universal. This means that it won't mention anything about the poem or the characters in it once I get to the last part of the sentence. The understanding will be some sort of lesson that can apply to most, if not all, people. So here's what our final sentence would look like. And it will convey that we have understood the whole poem. The speaker concludes by contrasting the bold claims of the memorialized tyrant with the desolate land surrounding the ancient ruins, illustrating that only art has the power to overcome the inevitable destruction that comes at the hands of time. The end of that topic sentence is completely thematic. The beginning of the topic sentence references the monument from the start of the poem, highlights the bold claims explored in the middle, and references the final setting that's actually projected at the end of the poem. Thus, in this last sentence, the whole poem is covered, both literally and idea-wise. And there you have them! All of these topic sentences for all of your poetry paragraphs, and they rock! <laughs> And now that we have our topic sentences, thesis construction will be incredibly simple. You can learn how to write your poetry thesis statements by checking out what's about to pop up on your screen.